Welcome class to lab two. This lab is the second lab in that lab PDF man manual, which is on Canvas. So I hope you're using that as you're working through this. Uh, this lab is on diffusion, osmosis, and filtration, and we'll get through these cell transport mechanisms in lecture as well. Uh, some of the objectives of this lab are define the terms of diffusion, dialysis, osmosis, and filtration, and also explain the physical factors and the rates that influence uh, these movements of cell transport. So basically what these, um, all of these processes are, are it talks and is describing movement through cell membranes. And we say they're either a passive mechanism or an active mechanism. In the passive mechanisms, the molecules move in or out of the cell and the cell doesn't have to pay or expend any energy to do this. So some passive mechanisms, again, these don't require any energy. These are diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis, and filtration. And those are the ones we'll be talking about today in lab. And then the active mechanisms, the cell does have to pay energy to move the molecules or things in or out of the cell. And these are active transport endocytosis, which is bringing large substances into the cell. And exocytosis is getting things out of the cell. So in simple diffusion, diffusion, it's the movement of substances from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. Uh, the easiest way to describe this is if you spray a little bit perfume into a room, after a while, you'll smell the perfume in the farthest corner of the room because that initial spray had the highest concentration of perfume and then the perfume will simply diffuse to every corner of that room. Um, so that's just simple diffusion, the movement of substances from high to low concentration. This is how oxygen, carbon dioxide, and any lipid-soluble substances um, move across your cells. So if we look at this beaker, this is a permeable membrane, which means things can get through it um, easily. Anything can pass through it. And in simple diffusion over time, uh, the red molecules and blue molecules will diffuse so that we'll get an equal concentration over time of the solute and the water molecule. This is an animation how diffusion works. And I'll let you guys watch this on your own. If you open up the PowerPoint file in Canvas, you can watch these animations, which will be helpful. Uh, diffusion is faster and you should know this. This will be a part of your uh, lab procedure and some of the lab questions. Uh, diffusion is always faster at higher temperatures. So higher temperatures will cause the molecules through kinetic energy to move more quickly and bounce off of each other. So they'll spread out more quickly. So diffusion is faster at higher temperatures. It is it's faster at steeper or larger concentration gradients. That means the greater the concentration gradient that exists, um, the faster diffusion will occur. So that means if you put um, a ton of solute or salt molecules in water, they'll more quickly bounce off each other and spread out. Diffusion is also faster when the medium is less viscous or thick or sticky. And that just makes sense. It's easier for the molecules to spread out and move if the medium, what they're traveling through, is less sticky or thick. And it's also faster with lower molecular weight molecules because smaller molecular weight molecules are just able to travel more quickly. Passive transport diffusion, again, is simple diffusion. Um, it's showing how, in this example, the molecules of a dye pass through a membrane until equilibri equilibrium is reached of concentration on both sides of the membrane. So this is the passive transport of one type of molecule. In the passive transport of two types of molecules, there's two different types of molecules, but they will both travel through the membrane until the concentration of each is equal on both sides of the membrane. And we call that equilibrium. And the best example of this in the body is oxygen and carbon dioxide in your lungs. Across the membrane of the alveoli, oxygen and carbon dioxide will diffuse into the blood vessels or into the air sacs um, for gas exchange. The fluid mosaic model, this explains a little bit what um, the cell membrane looks like and how different proteins might help carry larger substances in and out of the cell. Um, it just kind of explains um, how things get into and out of the cell since we're talking about cell transport. 
Um, this describes the cell membrane as some sort of tapestry of several types of molecules that are constantly moving. And this movement helps the cell membrane to maintain its role at a barrier between the inside and outside of the cell environments. Selective permeability, this just means that not everything is allowed to go into the cell. So if we say a membrane is selectively permeable, that just means that not everything can get into the cell. It only allows certain things to get through. So in the cell membrane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and anything small or nonpolar can get through the membrane. Glucose and anything large, polar, water-soluble molecules, any sort of ion, is not able to get through. Um, so everything small and that's nonpolar can get through a cell membrane, but we call that selective permeability, only allowing certain substances through. A solution is defined as a mixture of a solvent, which is the substance capable of dissolving a solid, normally that's always water, and a solute, which is a dissolved solid. So if we look at this picture, in a solution composed of water and table salt, which one would be the solvent and which one would be the solute? Well, the table salt is the solute, that's the dissolved solid, and the solvent is the water. And in most labs, water is the universal solvent um, because its properties just help it break apart other molecules. So if we combine a solvent and a solute together and mix them up until everything is equally distributed, we call that a solution. Osmosis is the passive transport of water across a selectively permeable membrane. Um, and in this case, we're gonna talk about hypotonic and hypertonic solutions. And the hypotonic solution is the solution ha that has the less concentrated solute. And the hypertonic solution has the greater concentrated solute. Isotonic solutions have equal concentration of solute on both sides. So if we look at the net movement of water through this um, semi or selectively permeable membrane, this just means that water is able to get through, but the larger solute molecules are not. Water will always travel into a region of higher concentration of solute molecule, molecules. And that's just to equal equalize the concentrations of those solute molecules on both sides of the membrane. So water will always travel from an area of um, low solute concentration to high solute concentration. And that's shown here how water travels from a hypotonic solution where there's less solute into a hypertonic solution where there's more solute until we reach this equilibrium on both sides of the membrane to get an isotonic solution. This is another great animation how osmosis works, so I'd encourage you guys to watch this um, when you open up the PowerPoint file. So some osmosis terms, a hypertonic solution, hyper means more. This has a higher concentration of ions or molecules. A hypotonic solution has a lower concentration of ions or molecules. And then an isotonic solution has the same concentration of ions or molecules. How to apply these terms? Um, if we are talking about coffee in a cup, we would say the coffee is warmer than the cup, and the cup is warmer than the counter that it's on, but the cup is still colder than the coffee. And if we explain this, we kind of use the same idea when we talk about hypertonic or hypotonic solutions. So solution A is hypertonic compared to solution B because solution A has more solute molecules. It has a greater concentration of solute. Solution B is hypertonic compared to solution C because B has the greater number of solute molecules compared to solution C. Solution B is hypotonic to solution A because it has less solute molecules than A and solution C is hypotonic compared to solution B because C has less solute molecules than B does. This is another animation uh, that a student from Cerritos College drew back in 2012. And in a way to remember what hypotonic and hypertonic solutions are and the way that water travels, if you think of the water molecules like hungry sharks and any chemical that's dissolved in the waters, their food, um, the water will go 
to an area where there's more food. And that's just shown here. Here are sharks. The sharks are going to travel to an area where there's no more food. And that's how we get um, more water on the side of the membrane. Another example, and this kind of takes us through some of the procedure questions. Um, inside a dialysis bag, there's 5% glucose, and outside there's water. And the fluid, is the fluid in the bag hypertonic compared to the fluid outside the bag, or is the fluid in the bag hypotonic compared to the fluid inside, outside the bag? So if inside a dialysis bag, and dialysis tubing is a bag that allows certain things to get through it. So dialysis bags would allow water to get through, but not glucose, which are too large to get through the pore openings within that bag. So the dialysis bag, there's 5% glucose, and outside there's water. Well, water will travel into that dialysis bag where there's more glucose. So the fluid in the bag will be is hypertonic because there's a greater concentration of glucose inside the bag than outside the bag. Another example inside the bag is 5% glucose and outside the bag is 4% glucose. Well, water is still going to travel into the hypertonic solution. And where's the hypertonic solution? the 5% glucose because it's a greater concentration than the 4% glucose outside the bag. So water always osmoses or travels from um, a hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution. And that just means that water is always traveling from where there's more water to less water. Another way to remember this is to remember the idea that solutes will suck the water and that just means that water travels into an area, area of higher solute concentration. So water will always move into a higher concentrated solute solution. This is important in your red blood cells in the body and administering someone a saline solution. You wanna make sure a solution that someone is getting in their blood um, is the correct uh, tonicity for what their red blood cells can handle. So here's an animal cell placed into a normal isotonic solution, meaning the concentration of any sort of mole molecule or solute is the same inside and outside of the body. So water will freely osmose into and out of the cell, but not more one way or the other because the solutions inside and out of the cell are already at equilibrium. So that's a normal isotonic solution. If we place a red blood cell into a hypotonic solution, that means this area where my cursor is um, has less solute concentration than inside the cell. So water will actually travel into the cell, causing it to swell or get larger, and it could lyse the cell, which means it could break apart the cell, and we call that lysing or cytolysis. If we place a red blood cell into a hypertonic solution, the hypertonic solution is where my cursor is, and the hypertonic solution has more solute concentration, water will travel out of the cell into that hypertonic solution, and the cell will shrivel up because it's losing water, and we call that crenation. And this is a slide of normal cells, um, cytolysis cells, and also shriveled up cells, depending on what type of solution they were placed in. Filtration is kind of the last part we'll talk about in this lab. This is the movement of a solvent and solute across a selectively permeable membrane as a result of hydrostatic or fluid pressure. And this is a similar setup of what we would do in lab. We would take a beaker and a funnel and put a filter paper. And then using the force of gravity, we would pour water and solutes through the filter paper to get out the water, but trap the solutes in that filter paper. And obviously, what type of solid that gets through the filter paper really depends on the pore size of that filter paper, how big the openings are. It might also depend on if we double stack the filter paper, maybe less solid would get through. But this is filtration. It's when smaller molecules are forced through porous membranes with holes. Hydrostatic pressure is important in the body. This is important in your capillaries. Molecules are always leaving blood capillaries um, into tissue fluid. So this is why we talk about filtration in physiology. This is just another look. Um, these are hoses that allow dripping or filtration through it. And this is basically what's happening in the capillaries of the body, um, how different molecules are getting through openings in those capillaries. 
So this is just a setup of the procedure of how we would do lab. We would take a filter paper, put it in a funnel, and then pour a mixture into the filter paper and funnel. Uh, the residue would collect the part of the solid that was too big to get through the pores, and then we would get the filtrate, which is whatever gets through at the end. A little bit more about filtration. Uh, the requirements of filtration are a filter medium, a fluid with suspended solids in it, a driving source, force such as pressure to cause the fluid to flow, a mechanical device like at the filter, um, and the rate of filtration is related to the force of the fluid pressure and the size of the molecule relative to size of the pores in that filter membrane. This is a look at the procedure if we were to take dialysis tubing or dialysis bags. We would tie off the dialysis tubing or dialysis bags and we would put a hypertonic or hypotonic solution into the bag and put it into um, a graduated cylinder with distilled water in it. And we would be able to see if the bag gained water or lost water by weighing it, um, depending on what, which way water would osmose. So this is actually a pretty fun experiment as well. A simple diffusion in a semi-solid, this will be the first procedure we go through. This is gonna take um, potassium permanganate and methylene blue, which have two different molecular weights, and putting them into an agar plate to see which one diffuses faster. And if you remember back in the PowerPoint, diffusion always occurs faster with lower molecular weights. Uh, the evidence for osmosis occurring in the dialysis tube in experiment would be the dialysis tube would gain water weight or weight if the water moved into the bag and it would lose water weight if the water was moving out of the bag. We're in procedure and lab, we would also test the water for the presence of glucose or protein um, with different reagents. So you can use these reagents to test for protein or glucose and we could test the, um, the the uh, solution or um, the mixture in the bag to see if anything diffused out of it. So this is just looking at the dialysis tubing, which is a selectively permeable membrane. Anything large cannot pass through the pores in the membrane, but small molecules can pass through. And again, this we would um, do this in our experiment procedure in the lab. So let's take a look at your procedure and I'm just gonna go ahead and share the lab manual, which again, hopefully you guys are using as you're um, answering your um, procedure questions. So I'm gonna let you guys read through, please read through the opening part of this lab. And I'm just gonna talk you through what we, would, what we would normally go through in the procedure. We would look at the molecular weight of diff diffusing substance. So we would look at um, potassium permanganate, which has this molecular weight of 158 and compared that to methylene blue, which has a molecular weight of 320, we would put one kind of piece of each in a Petri dish, and we would measure every 15 minutes for an hour how far they diffused. And we would find that the one with the lower molecular weight, the potassium permanganate, would diffuse the farthest. Then in the dialysis procedure, this one is really interesting. It, again, this is diffusion through an artificial membrane. We would prepare two dialysis bags, one with pro a protein solution and one with a glucose solution. We'd leave the bags in the beakers for one hour, and then we would remove and weigh each bag afterwards to see if any gained water or lost water to see which way water would osmose. And then um, we would test to see if protein or glucose diffused out of the bag. And we would use a reagent. If the protein diffused out of the bag in the first um, example, the solution would appear lavender using our biuret reagent. And in the second procedure, we would test for glucose um, using the Benedict's reagent. And normally, um, Proteins are much larger than glucose molecules, so proteins would normally um, stay in the bag and glucose might diffuse out of the bag. Um, these are, let's see, which one is this one? Now we get to filtration. Um, so filtration, we would set up um, kind of a procedure much like what we saw in the PowerPoint with a beaker, a funnel, and filter paper. 
and we would look at the pressure gradients and the rate of filtration, the thickness of the filtration membrane and the size of the filtration membrane pores. So we would use different types of filtration sheets, one with larger and smaller pores. We would add two sheets, we would increase the pressure to see how um, filtration was affected by these different differences. And then these are the lab report questions that I'll let you guys work through. Please, if you have any questions, post them in the discussion forum for this lab. Um, I'm just gonna point out number nine, uh, you can kind of, you can skip out or take out number nine. Would sodium or chloride diffuse? Chloride is usually the larger of the two, so it'll stay on one side of the membrane. Um, but just don't worry about doing number nine. It's hard to do that one without being in lab. And that's all for this lab. Good luck, guys. Thanks for your effort and hope you're all staying healthy and well.